Let's take a look at any old VI as an example here. We'll choose the circular buffer example. Take note that when we have the auto tool selected, we can actually double click on any open area of our VI and add a freeform label. These labels can be created on both the block diagram and on the front panel. In addition, we can use the paintbrush tool to change the color of the notes and we can change the font size, style, and text color. One of the things we can consider when we leave these notes is that there is, from the edit menu, the find and replace function. A way we can use this is we can use a note inside of our annotation to remind us later on to do something. Part of the problem with annotations and labels within our VI is that quite often things are stacked up either in event structures or sequence structures or case structures in such a way that it's difficult to see all of our annotations at once. For example, we don't see our note right now so it may not be effective in reminding us to do something. However, if we define a set of codes, we can always use the find and replace function to search for text. We can type in any words we want here. In particular, we can use note. And we can define the search scope, whether it's just the selected VI, or whether it's all VIs, or a series of VIs. In addition, if we go to the More Options selection, we can turn on or off whether it searches on the front panel and or the block diagram, as well as some other options. For now, let's do a search for the word note in all caps. When we click the Find button, it goes and does a search, and it's returned two of them. We double click on the first one, we see it's found the word note on the front panel. And if we go back to the search results, we can either double click on the second one, or a shortcut is to use Control G to find the next. So we see here we're able to search for and find all of the instances of a particular word on the front panel and the block diagram of one or many VIs. We can use this capability in our notes to very effectively search for specific cases, and in particular, bugs or pieces of code that need to be finished off. The next method of documentation to discuss is to take advantage of our context help window. Here the circular buffer is a VI that we've created ourselves. As such we have the ability to define the text which appears in the context help. Let's open up the circular buffer. If we go to this VI's properties and we can access that by either right clicking on the icon and choosing VI properties or by going from the File menu to VI Properties. Under the Documentation tab, we have the ability to type in a description. This VI is a circular buffer functional global provided by LabVIEW Mastery. Whatever text we type into this VI description, when we then close the VI or return back to the parent VI, now, when we enable our context help and we hover over the sub-VI, we see the description that we just created appears here. This is a particularly powerful method of providing very brief and convenient descriptions as part of our code. It's useful for reminding ourselves what our code does, and also useful for conveying important information to colleagues. The next topic to discuss, again for sub-VIs, is called the revision history. We can access the revision history and its settings again through the VI properties. There's a category of information called revision history, and here we can choose whether or not to apply the default history settings or to specify our own history settings. Here we can choose whether we want to add an entry every time the VI is saved, prompt for a comment when the VI is closed or saved, and also to record comments generated by LabVIEW. In this way, we can force good habits of revision history keeping by having LabVIEW automatically prompt us for important VIs. It's up to personal preference whether or not to enable these settings, and you may find that certain VIs should have them enabled and certain should not. In addition, from this tab, we can view the current revision history. Here it will show the user who's currently active in LabVIEW and a list of all the comments and the history up to that point. If we are now to make a modification, and save it, we see that LabVIEW automatically brings up the history screen
and allows us to provide a comment at this time. And now if we were to return to the revision history of this VI and view it, we'll see that it's showing information about what has happened to this VI, as well as any notes, and as well as any automatic warnings or information that's been provided by LabVIEW. In addition, the revision number is automatically incremented. Plus, we have the ability here to reset the VI history so that we can remove all the revision notes up to that point and reset the revision number as well.